right now. Good morning, friends. My name is Sarah Barrios, and I am your indoor garden gal here to talk about repotting today. Everything you've ever wanted to know about repotting houseplants. And we're going to run the gamut. We're going to talk about all the different types of houseplants because there's so many different varieties. There are things that live in trees. There are things that live in a desert. And there are things that live in the jungle and the ground. So we're going to go over all of them, actually. Um, so the first question usually is, how do I know when it's time to repot? Pot. So basically, if you see roots coming out of the top of the plant or out of the bottom of the plant, that is not necessarily um, an indication that your plant needs to get repotted. Why is that? Because let's take this little guy, for instance. Um, if I take this plant out of its pot, you'll notice there's pretty much no roots except for just a few down at the very bottom. So the first thing is, um, unpot your plant and take a look at your root system. You may find all of your roots are simply at the top or they're all at the bottom, but there's kind of nothing in the middle. So roots grow kind of differently with different types of plants and they may, let's say you tend to water from the bottom, your roots are gonna grow down towards the bottom. If you um, tend to be a top waterer and you don't water very heavy, maybe most of your roots are going to find their way up towards the top because that's where they're getting the most moisture. So always unpot your plant first and take a look at your roots. For tropical plants that look like they belong in a jungle, the general rule of thumb is if you can see more roots than soil, it's probably time to repot. But for something like this, um, you probably don't need to go bigger right now, but you can always repot it into a more decorative pot. So that's kind of the scoop on um, jungle plants. Let's take a look at this peace lily. Um, so now what's happening is I can see that I can pretty much see more roots than soil. Also, um, peace lilies just in general tend to be very thirsty plants. So this is actually ready to be up potted into the next size up. So with these two plants, you have, they're both in four inch pots. Um, but I can see that this guy probably doesn't need to go bigger right now. If you still wanted to go bigger, one inch is okay. This guy, probably you can go one to two inches on. So sizing, when you're trying to determine what size to go up, um, try and figure out, okay, well, I've got a jungle plant, so they like a little bit more water, like ferns, things like that. You can always go up one to two inches on the smaller stuff. So now I'm going to take a look at... Um, this guy right here, we've got an aloe vera, and I'm gonna take this out of its pot and let's take a good look at that root system. So um, one thing you're gonna notice is look at the consistency of the potting medium that's grown in. You're probably gonna notice a lot of white stuff that is perlite, that is a volcanic stone that a lot of growers actually use to um, lighten up and aerate the soil. So basically um, what that's gonna do is it's going to allow for better drainage. So um, you know, we'll talk more about potting mediums um, in a second, but what I want you to do is just see this root system. So succulents and cactus really love it snug. So I would probably actually keep this particular plant in the same size pot. Um, and then kind of the general rule of thumb is, with succulents, only if it's kind of bursting out of its pot, would you actually want to go up a little bit bigger. That way you can water it, have it drain out, let it stay dry. Um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, they bring home a new plant, they're all excited about it, and I'm going to give my pot a nice new, you know, big pot to grow into. And, you know, with succulents and, and cactus, it's really hard to replicate their natural environment when you do that, because when you go to water, there's just so much soil and there's not enough roots and the soil ends up staying wet for a prolonged period of time and then what happens is um, it ends up um, rotting up the plant so that's why you always want to keep it snug with these guys and then um, we have a third category of plants which are called epiphytes so these are actually a whole category of plants that live up in trees so you have your air plants which are tillandsias or bromeliads and then you have what i call the tree hugger collection of succulents and that's going to be hoyas christmas cactus um, there's also um, other types of bromeliads things that have nice big showy flowers and of course you have your orchids so um, the potting medium that you're going to be repotting these guys into is going to be a little bit different. Um, I have got to tell you, I have not found um, a commercial mix, you know, that 
any company like a Spelma Hoffman, any of the brands that actually make a really great soil to repot tree hugger succulents, tropical jungle succulents that are epiphytic plants that live off of another plant in a non-parasitic way. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make your own custom mix um, for long-term success. So let's take a look at this guy. So, um, you know, not a huge plant. It's in a six inch pot. And then I'm going to just gently take it out and show you that um, not a big root system. So one thing that you can know is this doesn't need to go in a bigger pot, but again, can get repotted. And the other thing that I want to show you is because it is a succulent that lives in a tree, it's in a mix that's very loose. So this is a regular potting mix that has bark, fur bark added to it for aeration and drainage. So um, what we're going to do now is we are going to talk about sick plants versus healthy um, plants. So if you're repotting a plant because it's sick and it needs new soil, let's say you accidentally overwatered it. So what you can do is actually add some biotone. So if your plant was sick because you accidentally overwatered it, that means that your root system is compromised. And remember that roots are literally the mouth of the plant. So when the root system starts to rot away, your plant can no longer hydrate itself and misting and watering the leaves is not going to help. Uh, think about it this way. If, if I dumped a bucket of water on your head, would that hydrate you? Or would you drinking a bottle of water hydrate you? So just understand that if your plant is compromised because it got root rot, you really, when you're repotting, you want to focus on rebuilding your root system. This is Biotone. It's from a company called Espoma. And this is actually a beneficial bacteria that stimulates root growth. So you really want to focus on your roots at that point um, and anything that will help your roots grow. So we're not talking about propagating, we're talking about an actual plant, not cuttings. So mix this in, just look at the back of the package and follow the application rate. And then this is going to tell you um, how much to put in. You're going to mix it in with your soil that you're repotting. You're not actually going to put it on the top of the soil after the repotting. And then um, this is going to help stimulate your root growth. Um, if you have enough stem that you want to put some, instead you want to put some root tone on, you can. But I recommend this instead. Um, so this is a great product, you guys. But you don't. You only need to do this if you have a compromised plant. Um, now I want to talk about um, pot styles and mixes. So basically, people repot things into a couple of different um, pot types. You've got your ceramic glazed pottery like this and then you also have your terracotta like this and then also you know plastic so um what is the difference the only difference is that terracotta is going to wick away moisture and the other two don't because terracotta is inherently porous by nature so it's naturally gonna kind of wick or sweat away water that's in there. So you can still do ferns and calatheas and other plants that like a little bit more hydration, but maybe just go up one more inch if you're gonna do terracotta. Um, and then glazed um, ceramic has a, a solid coating on the exterior. So it, you know, water's not gonna run through that. Same thing with plastic. So as long as the plant, as long as the pots have a drainage hole, you're good. And that even goes for orchids. Um, and speaking of orchids, so you are going to notice if you take home an orchid a lot of times, it's going to come in a clear pot like this. So in its natural environment, the root system is completely exposed to air and light and water and sun and all that kind of stuff. And so a lot of times they actually have these in the clear pots, but you don't have to repot an orchid in a clear pot. Um, most times you're going to find an orchid in this kind of setup wherever you go. It is in a grower's pot with drainage holes, and then it's going to be usually in a ceramic pot that doesn't have a drainage hole. So you can repot an orchid into any material you want. You can go into terracotta. Um, I'm not actually going to do the repotting on this orchid because it's in bloom. Um, you can still repot an orchid in bloom, but what you really want to do is simply take it out like this and then just pop it in the new pot. Really, 
merely if you're just doing it for decorative reasons, you didn't like the pot that it came in. If you actually do a full on repotting with orchids and you disturb the root system too much, they will um, kind of feel a little traumatized and they will drop their buds and drop their flowers. So um, if you just don't disturb the root system, take the whole root ball and pop it into a new pot like that, you can repot when it's in bloom. But if you're actually doing a full on repotting, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fingers and strip away all of the potting medium. You are gonna find that orchids either come in a bark and charcoal mix like this or moss. Well, what's the difference? I just think it's a, it's a personal preference for the grower. Um, so bark and charcoal is healthier because again, you're mimicking its natural environment. So if you do happen to have an orchid that came home in moss after it's out of bloom um, in about a year or so, you can repot that back into the bark and charcoal mix. You only have to repot orchids every one to two years. A lot of times, um, they may not have grown big enough that you need to actually upgrade into a larger pot. A lot of times you're just changing out the potting medium because bark and charcoal and moss break down faster than soil does. So every one to two years on your repotting for your orchids. Um, and then what we're going to talk about next is um, we're actually going to do a few demonstrations. How exactly to repot um, some plants that I actually can do that with. So we're going to take this root bound peace lily. And um, usually what I do is I just use my fingers. You can use glove fingers or you know whatever you want to do. And I am going to start at the middle back here. This is the easiest way to tease out your root system. If you repot it and you just stick it in like this, these roots have really conformed their growers pot. And it's really hard for them to spread out into the new pot. And that's why you actually want to tease them out. And you don't have to go major hardcore on that. So I'm actually going to massage this. And then after I've done that, and I'm getting all up in there, you're going to notice that the roots are starting to spread out a little bit. And this is actually a great place for you to go into your new home. Now, what we're going to do is let's pick out our pot size. So I have brought three different pots. So I've got this one. I have this one. And I have this one. So I'm going to show you guys. These are usually uh, standard size pots. You're going to find at retailers that um, pot sizes are pretty much four inch, six inch, and eight inch, and then like somewhere in that range. So with a peace lily, let's take a let's take a closer look at this. So this is pretty much almost going into the same size pot. You're getting a little bit of room but it's really not worth it. I'm thinking this is a better pot size to go in for a peace lily or a fern or some other plant that likes to be a little bit more on the lightly moist side. So this is actually the pot I'm going to choose. This is a pot size. Now, if we went with this pot size, not only aesthetically does it not look proportionate, but also um, with all of that extra room, you will accidentally and inevitably end up overwatering this plant. So that's why it's so important to simply go up incrementally. So, um, so we're gonna go with this one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some kind of broken pottery shard, styrofoam peanuts, large rocks to partially block the hole. The hole is so much bigger than what you need. And basically, if you just put loose soil in there, it is gonna make a huge mess. So it's just for, really, it's not, it, it's for drainage, but it's also to partially obstruct all of that new loose soil to go in. So let's determine how much soil we actually need to put in before we put a plant in. So um, when I'm determining it, I'm putting my plant in, you want your soil level to be slightly below the rim of the pot. That way, when you go to water, um, the water has time to absorb it. If you put your soil level flush with the top of the pot, what's gonna happen is the water is gonna run off the sides. So I have determined, let's just show you on the exterior here. This is where I wanna be at. So I probably wanna put about, an inch and a half of loose soil in first. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of pieces of 
something in here. Um, I happen to have bark on hand. And then I'm going to use a potting mix that is specifically labeled for um, house plants. And you're going to find espoma is going to be what a lot of people carry, including Western nurseries, for um, smaller bags of soil. So I am using this espoma mix that I'm going in here. Now you're going to notice I didn't even use the word soil. That's because a lot of um, these companies have gotten away from dirt. So these mixes are primarily composed of um, ground up peat moss. You're gonna find some vermiculite and perlite in there for drainage and maybe even a little bit of bark. So this is kind of a great mix all around for a plant to be able to um, have some moisture retention, but also have good drainage too, so that your soil doesn't compact over time. And also with this, um, last 20 years getting into more organic things. That's a, a lot of the reason why also some of these mixes have actually changed formulas. So, you know, 25 years ago, you know, the mixes, the potting mixes we were using were, were very different. So um, you're going to notice that these potting mixes are a little bit lighter. Um, if you've, you know, been working with houseplants, you know, for over 30 years. So um, here I am, I've got this much soil in here. I'm popping my plant in here and uh, it looks a little low, so I'm going to add some more. Okay. Now, this is a great soil level because I can see that it is slightly below the rim. And then I am going to put in some more soil. And then you're going to lightly tamp it, tamp this in. You don't have to go, um, you know, be too, too firm with it. Also, what will happen is once you water it in at the end, that's going to help the soil cell as well. So I'm just taking my fingers again and lightly tamping that in. And then after you do a repotting, you always want to lightly water it in. So this is my repotted piece of lily. And this is the right level that you want to be at on this guy. So now what we're going to do is we are going to repot our little Hoya. So what I'm going to do here is you can either use really um, a lot of places just carry um, just a bag of fur bark. So what I recommend is two parts um, regular potting soil or even African violet soil and then one part bark because you want to aerate the soil to mimic its natural environment. Keep in mind, plants that don't normally live in soil, their root systems are not designed to live in dirt and soil. So that's why you need to, you're gonna, it's confusing. It's really confusing because you're gonna find a Christmas cactus in soil or a lipstick plant or a goldfish plant. And in this case, you know, a Hoya, you're gonna notice it's, you know, in soil, but it's a special mix. So you're gonna make your custom mix at home. And so what we're gonna do is, let's figure out what size pot we're gonna go into. Now, normally I would go into this size pot. So I'm going to, at this point, Um, I do happen to have some, this is actually an orchid mix. So the orchid mix has charcoal in here. You don't really need the charcoal for um, doing a Hoya repotting. So just get the regular straight up fur bark. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to regular soil and then I'm gonna create a custom mix. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is use this vessel and I'm gonna pour some soil in there. And then I'm going to add some bark to it and then mix that up. I'm going to add a little bit more soil. All right, and then I want you to take a look at that mix that I just made. I hope you guys can see that okay. Um, so basically, this is what the mix looks like. So it's two thirds, two parts. Um, soil, and then there's a bunch of big barky chunks in there. So again, bromeliads um, and any of your tree hugger succulents, including Christmas cactus, that's really the kind of the mix you really want to go with. They would love that. They would appreciate that. And you'll have more long-term success with your plants that way. Um, okay, what is next? Um, then we're going to talk about um, fertilizing. So 
what I want you to understand is that even though you're doing something good for your plant, repotting is traumatizing for host plants. Um, think about it. Like when we have to move, like just, it, it's just, it, you're literally uprooting yourself and moving and that can be stressful. And it's also stressful for plants. Um, so once you get your pot settled into its new home, give it a week or two before you start fertilizing. Um, let it settle in. Let it just rest and kind of, you know, get used to its new home. So really two weeks is better. If you are uh, repotting in the spring and summer, you can fertilize. If you're potting in the winter, you don't have to fertilize um, because there's just shorter daylight hours. There's not enough energy for plants to really be um, doing a lot of active growing. So there's really no need to fertilize after that. And um, I know a lot of people say, oh, repot in the spring, repot in the spring. You don't, you can repot any time of the year. Most people either repot in the spring when we get the longer daylight hours and plants are heading into their active growth phase or in the fall after your plants, your house plants, maybe you put them outside all summer and they went gangbusters and now they need to be repotted. So um, the fall before you bring them in or just the fall, if you have them in your house and you had them growing all you know summer long into the fall, you can repot them then. But Again, you know, you're bringing home plants any time of the year, you can repot them anytime. So um, basically it is figuring out what size you need to repot into. Um, you may just be repotting into the same size pot. Um, and then the last thing I wanna talk about, because we primarily talked about smaller plants right now, we're talking about house plants on um, floor plant sized. So here is a 10 inch growers pot. It's actually technically nine and a half because I measured it. And this is a 12 inch um, terracotta pot. So I know that this pot looks different from the camera angle, but I'm gonna put this in and I wanna show you something. So basically, House plants come in cylindrical, straight-sided pots from the growers, and they're going to look like this. But most pottery is tapered, tapers down. So understanding soil volume is also important. So a 10-inch grower's pot is pretty much the same amount of soil volume as a 12-inch clay pot. When you are going to measure your pots, um, bring a tape measure with you. If you don't have one, that's okay. Weston Nurseries has yardsticks and measuring tapes for you if you want. Um, always measure on the inside diameter. So, um, and the reason why that's important is because different countries of origin actually have different thicknesses. So Vietnamese pottery is very thick and heavy, whereas Portuguese pottery is actually very thin, a lot of it's porcelain. So if you're measuring on the outside diameter and you're, you're deciding between a Vietnamese pot and a Portuguese pot, basically what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna get more soil volume with that porcelain pot than a thicker. So always measure on the inside diameter. So here we are, um, this right here. So going from a 10 inch pot to a 12 inch taper is actually exactly the same amount of soil volume. So you're gonna be going up into a 14 or 15 inch pot. Oh my God, that sounds scary. It's not, it's okay. Because again, soil volume wise, if it is a tapered pot, then that's okay. So a 10 inch to a 14 inch pot is really only more like two, two and a half inch uh, difference on that. So, um, so that's okay. Um, I know now more recently, there are a lot more cylindrical parts on the market. So if that's the case, you're just going up about two inches. So the general rule of thumb with plants that are in the two inch to, I'm going to say eight inch range, you're going up about an inch to an inch and a half. And then anything that's over 10 inches, you can go two to three inches for tropical plants. Obviously cactus and succulents, you're staying in pretty much the same size pot from the grower. Um, also, the last thing I want to just mention is when you are picking out certain plants like Tradens canthias, pothos, philodendrons, there are certain plants that are actually produced by propagation and cuttings. These guys are not going to have a big root system when you first get them home. So always just check those plants to make sure they actually really are root bound before you repot them into a larger pot. Um, 
a lot of times these things get propagated and as soon as the root systems are big enough according to the growers they release them and send them off to the retailers so a lot of times these smaller plants don't have big well-developed root systems um, unless they've been sitting um, on the retail floor for a little bit of while you know a little while and have a little bit more time to actually develop those root systems so that's why it's really great to get into the habit of just unpotting your plant get comfortable with it it's okay um you know it's not going to hurt the plant and a lot of people are afraid you know oh i don't want to hurt it you're not going to hurt your house plant by unpotting it um and i just really encourage you to get in the habit of doing that and really the best way to do that is to take one hand on your pot and one hand at the base of your plant like this. If it doesn't come out easily, then what you're gonna do is kind of squeeze the pot and loosen up that root ball and then wiggle your plant out. If your plant is to the point where it is so root bound, like a ZZ plant or a snake plant, that is actually, the, the pot is misshapen, you are gonna actually take a pair of scissors and you're gonna cut that pot off because there's no way to get it out. And that's okay, because if it's in the grower's pot, who cares, you're gonna throw it away, or I'm sorry, recycle it anyway. So um, that's my kind of spiel on um, repotting house plants. And I am now gonna open up the floor for questions, which you can leave in the comment box. And then my colleague is gonna leave them off to me and I'll repeat them to you. Okay, you ready? Yes. Yeah. I have a Christmas cactus that has become top heavy and it is leaning. How best to trim this plant back? So the question was, um, a customer uh, um, has a top heavy, Christmas cactus and it's leaning to this point. So how to trim it back. So first of all, some tips and tricks when you have a plant that is either grown very tall and leggy or is very top heavy is to unpot it and then repot it deeper into your pot. So if it is in a low, if it's in a low wide pot, then what you can do is um, get a taller pot like this and repot it lower in the pot so that actually as the Christmas cactus cascades over, it's actually holding itself up on the rim of the pot. Um, in terms of pruning it back, you can pretty much prune that back however far you want to. It's not, there's nothing tricky about it. If you're uncomfortable doing that, uh, we do provide a service where we do repottings and we do, uh, we can clean up and uh, cut back your plant. And then the last thing I would suggest is, um, I know for me, visual aids are so helpful. Go on YouTube and just watch a five minute video on how to do a prone back. Um, so it just depends on your comfort level. But um, mm -hmm. what I do a lot of times when plants get leggy is I just simply pot them deeper in a pot. So choosing a taller, narrow pot, and then you can plant it deeper in the pot. You don't have to have your soil level right at the top. And then your plant looks fresh and new again. It's not leggy. It doesn't look like it's leaning. It's going to be fully supported by your pot. All right, what's next? Thank you. Next question is really interesting about potting and mixing. It seems store-bought would stay too, but for succulents, do you have to repot? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understood the question. Um, that is from Jean Kravis. So she, you could ask her to unmute herself. So Jean, I think your question was about potting mixes. So um, because there are three main different types, I'm gonna, I, I say three, but really with orchids and it's kind of a separate category with the bark and charcoal. So you have your potting mixes that are especially for jungle plants that live in the ground that are terrestrial. And then you have your cactus mixes, which are very light. I actually have a cactus mix here. Um, cactus mixes are much lighter and they have a lot of sand in them. They have a lot of perlite and a lot of bark, more so than the regular potting mixes. So um, when you come to Western Nurseries, what's really great is Espoma. The Espoma line has everything color coded. So lime green bag, just to make it easy, is for jungle plants that live in the ground. And then um, if you're repotting a cactus or succulents, you want to use the orange bag. And it's labeled right on the front. And then um, there's uh, a purple colored bag that's actually for orchids and everything's clearly labeled. However, um, they have an African violet soil. A lot of people don't know this, but African violets are actually um, borderline lithophytes. So all that means is 
um, instead of living up in trees, they actually live off of rocks. So they live in these little crevices in between rocks, usually on the side of a stream. So um, if you've ever opened up a bag of African violet soil, it's very dusty and light and wonderfully aerated. So um, that's why I always like to geek out about where are plants native to? Where does this plant live in its natural habitat? If you've ever Googled, um, let's say an African violet, for instance, and you look at where this plant lives um, in parts of Africa, but the specialized area along streams, but living off of rocks, it's pretty fascinating. And that's why you want your soil mix to reflect what these plants have spent millions of years um, evolving to adapt to. That's why you don't get one bag of soil every pot, your orchid, your cactus, and your peace lily in it. Um, because our house plants come from all over the world. So, um, uh, but, but the problem is there's no mix that's on the market that's specially formulated for epiphytic succulents. And you can't simply put them in a cactus mix because they need more, they actually need more hydration than their desert terrestrial cousins. They also need more higher humidity because they live in the jungle. But at the same time, they don't want their roots to be waterlogged. So you can't use a regular potting soil straight up. You still have to aerate it with some fur bark. So yes, so always doing a mix that makes sense for your plant where it's native to is where you're going to get optimal long-term success with your house plants uh, when you're repotting. And if you have any questions, because when you go into a retail store, you're not necessarily going to be able to just point out a plant that lives in the desert or a plant that lives up in a tree in a jungle. So just take the plant out. You can just slightly pot it and take it out, you know, at the store. It's okay. Um, and look at the mix. Again, let's take a look at this. This, this is clearly a desert plant. Look at how white that soil is. Look at how dusty it is. Look how much perlite's in there. And then this guy here, um, when I just simply just, you don't even have to unpot it. Just look at the mix. It's all bark. It's all bark. So if you are unsure, um, you know, obviously when you come to a family owned garden center, you have all the plant experts who love working at garden centers, family owned. This is where you're going to find people who will take the time to talk with you and teach you all about your house plants and anything you need to know, any questions you have about your plants that you already have at home. Um, but usually plants that live in the ground grow upright and plants that live up in trees are gonna cascade down. So that will be a dead giveaway. Also plants that live in the jungle tend to have bigger leaves. Um, whereas plants that live in the uh, arid environments, they, they definitely have more trunk and smaller leaves or modified leaves that are you know, really tight or low. So um, that's another kind of giveaway for that. All right, what's next? Okay, so the next question is, I have an asparagus fern that's bursting out of the 14 inch pot. Can I divide it before transplanting and put it into two smaller pots? So the question is, can an asparagus fern be divided? So first let's talk about asparagus ferns. So asparagus fern, the word fern is, is, is actually a misnomer. You will find in the houseplant genre, there are a lot of misnomers. So for instance, like a bamboo palm is not a bamboo and things like that. So um, these guys actually live in very arid environments. So when you go to unpot it, if you've never unpotted asparagus fern before, you're, the first thing you're gonna notice is it actually has these white storage bulbs attached to their um, root system. So that is their particular way of going long periods without water. So um, the cool thing about asparagus ferns is they will take a wide range of watering conditions, but what they can't tolerate is being severely root bound. The leaves will start turning yellow and they'll start dropping. A lot of people think that's over watering, but it's usually because the plant's been um, just stuffed into a pot, it's grown, they grow really, really quickly. So um, when you unpot that, just don't be alarmed by those storage bulbs. Um, ZZ plants also do the whole storage bulb thing. Um, again, it's like a camel storing, you know, fat in its humps. Um, so that's their way of doing that even though the top looks like a fern. So when you unpot that, yes, you should be able to easily divide that. Um, get your fingers in there and find the place where you can 
divide it the you know the most easily if you can't you could probably just take a very sharp knife and divide it in half um, and repot it that way into the two separate pots um, and use regular pine soil for that's going to be just fine all right what's next okay the last question is oh there are two sorry um, I have a ponytail plant three feet high above the pot, never potted, but was tipped over, so less soil than it had. What should I do? So the question is uh, about a tipped over ponytail palm. What to do about that? So ponytail palms. Nancy, can I just tell you if you need to see it, I, it's here and I can use my, my cell phone to show people. But anyway, go ahead. All right. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Basically, ponytail palms live in a very arid environment in the Mexican desert. So it's kind of cool because they do have those strappy leaves, but the leaves are very stiff. And they have that really thick base that's kind of um, what we call a codex. So that is um, nature's way. That's one of the evolutionary adaptations that plants will do um, to have that swollen base to um, to have a little bit store, be able to store a little bit of moisture in there. So instead of having succulent leaves, it's got that big, thick, chunky base. What you're gonna find with any plant that either has a cane, a wooden cane, like a corn plant, or yucca, a yucca cane, um, or a ponytail palm is when you unpot them, you're going to notice, oh my God, there's like very small root system. So that will tell you that they don't want to go into a big pot. So um, what I would do is if it doesn't look like it needs to be repotted into a bigger pot, I would simply lay down a black trash bag, take it out of the pot, dump out the soil, and then repot it right back into the same pot. And you can use a cactus soil for that. Yeah. It, it also is making babies all over the place. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't have its stress. I'm going to show you on my cell phone. I don't know if sure. I have to. Okay. okay, let's see. I guess I have to do something different, like close that. I'll just do that. Okay, I think I you can still see me. Um, I hope it can still see me. Okay, um, here. Whoop. Damn, it's using my it's using my computer. Okay, okay, we'll do it this way. Hmm. Where are you? It's right in front of me. How do I okay. make this turn around? Oh, I can I see it, but not. It's just dark. Yeah, let's see if you can see it from this direction, perhaps. Uh, if I, hold on, my screen's just really small too. So let me see. I still can't see it. Oh, well, let's see if I do speak. Do you have you would... multiple? Do you have multiple trunks on that? I didn't used to. Um, oh. <laughs> this, had been, this had been my mother's, yeah. and uh, she's gone since 1989. And um, well, it looks amazing. So, are you? Are it's you got these like two this here. Overwhelming. Do you want to cut off the babies? Well, I want to know about them a little bit, but here are two here, and then up at the top, there are two new fresh ones that are symmetrical. Yeah. Here. So if, if you're happy with it, I would just let it do its thing. I mean, uh -huh. it's old. So it's funny because we always see ponytail palms when they're cute and small. Yeah. Um, you know, they can the get store. 20 feet high, right? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's really, it's, it's a really beautiful ponytail palm. Um, so it was just so funny because like then I go down to Florida. If you guys have ever been down to Florida, then you start seeing all of the, the plants that we grow as house plants and you see them mature and big like Monstera Swiss cheese plants, like 20, 30 feet in the air and, you know, poems, you know just agaves that are bigger than you. And um, it's just amazing to see how big that these things can get. You know, I always see mm -hmm. ponytail palms, you know, in a 10 inch pot, yeah. three feet high. So uh, that's a real <laughs> treat to see your ponytail palm. So um, really, there's nothing you need to do. Like I said, I would just lay it. If, if you have somebody that can help you repot it, stand yeah. great. Um, it needs that. <laughs> yeah, I think because it is so tall, that would probably be better. Have one person holding it at the top to be able to put it in. And yeah. then, um, so this is a pot. Does problem. it need does it need a new pot? Well, so because they have small root systems, um, yeah. if 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 once you take that out and you feel like 
it doesn't need to go into a bigger pot then mm -hmm. what i would do is you can repot it back into that pot and freshen up the soil so let's say it's been in that pot for the last 10 years with cactus and succulents they're already used to really depleted um soil that it lacks nutrients and is degraded and all that kind of stuff and that's fine for them they're okay with that they're used to that they've evolved mm -hmm. to adapt to that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um but even old soil does break down over time so if you want to freshen up with some fresh cactus soil you can do that okay um, and also keep yeah. in mind guys you know if you're repotting into the same size pot you can be on your regular watering schedule but if you're repotting into a bigger pot you know, you're going to be watering a little less often. You're not going to be on your same watering schedule. So just make sure you know that more soil does take longer to dry out. So that's what I recommend. Now, if you feel like it's getting a little top heavy, I noticed that your pot is, this is what we call uh, in the industry, a standard pot. So yes. it's tall like this. Yeah. What you could do is you could get um, what's called an azalea pot. So it's a lower, Azalea. wider pot. I've been and looking that will help for one. stabilize a little bit more. Yes, you want I've been looking that. for those for years to try to get one that is wider. I think it would also be more attractive. And, yeah, uh, so my yeah, cat, um, if you feel like it, it, if you're concerned about it tipping over because it has gotten so tall and it I is am. in a taller pot, you can go low and wide in a more yeah. of a bowl. Again, okay. Ponytail palms don't have big, huge root systems, so you can go into a bowl. They don't need all the depth. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, thanks, Jeannie. Thank you very much. Wow. All right, um, someone wants to know pea gravel for dry bird plants. What about them? Pea gravel for drier plants. So are you talking about putting, mixing it in with the soil? Um, yes. Gravel? Okay, so pea gravel, basically, I don't think, makes sense to mix in with um, with your soil. You can put it at the bottom. Um, let's say you had a pot that was very tall and you didn't need all that depth because your plant is really like this, you know, the root, the roots are only this, you know, this deep. And it's a cactus or a succulent or something you really don't want to overwater. What you can do is you can fill the bottom, fill half the pot with um, broken pottery shards, styrofoam peanuts, gravel. Gravel just gets heavy. Um, so that's why I, I'm not a huge gravel fan. And then gravel as a top dressing um, is just an aesthetic. It also will probably keep in more moisture if you're looking to do that, but I don't recommend using gravel um, in the soil or on top of the soil for cactus and succulents, um, big heavy gravel, like a big thick coating of it, because it also makes it hard for you to be able to gauge whether or not it needs water. So like, like tiny, like think like fish, fish aquarium size gravel um, is totally fine. In fact, you'll find some cactus and succulents actually have nice little tiny aquarium gravel in there. That's a nice gravel to work with, but the pea gravel is big, um, big, bigger chunks. So I, I just think it makes it harder on a, a bunch of different levels. So I don't, I don't really recommend that for top or in the soil. Yeah. All right, what's next? Okay, we have, um, I have a bleeding heart, which I think needs to be divine. When is the best time to do that? So bleeding hearts is actually a perennial that is out of my realm of expertise. However, leave us your email. Actually, email me at greenhousecc at westonnurseries.com and I will get your question answered. I'll take care of that for you. Uh, but I don't know the answer to that. I do know a lot about perennials, um, but I don't know that particular answer. All right, what's next? Okay, so the I have last question is... What is the white salty liquid develops on top of the soil of a house plant? What is the white salty crusty thing that develops on the top of house plants? You may also notice that this develops on your terracotta pot. So um, what happens is when you've had a plant in a pot for a really long time, um, I, want you to, I want you to think about, because of course we don't think about it really, um, all of the things that are in our water. And some of us have hard water and some of us have soft water. And, um, and then the government adds chlorine and fluoride and all kinds of other things to our tap water as well. So what happens is 
uh, when you water a plant, the water evaporates and some of those natural minerals and different things get left behind. And that is that crusty uh, formation that you see. And it usually only forms after a couple of years of many, many waterings and many, many dryings out. So that's what that is. So what you can do is take a firm scrubby brush and you can actually scrub it off. You may not be able to fully get the line off on a terracotta pot, but you can rinse you know, a lot of that away. Also, if you've had a plant in a pot for a really long time, that those salts and those natural things are building up in your plant anyway. A lot of people recommend doing a flushing out um, like you know, every once in a while. If you had a plant in a pot for 10 years, you might wanna flush out your soil, really like flush it out, and then do that like three or four times and really flush out, you know, try to get out all of those salts that have built up over time. You don't have to do that unless you've had a plant in a pot for a, really a number of years. All right, what's next? That's the last one. All right, perfect guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If after the class you found, oh wait, I did have a question. Just go ahead and email me at Greenhouse CC, that just stands for customer service, uh, customer care, sorry. Greenhouse CC at WestonNurseries.com and I'll get back to you within one to two days. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Nancy. Any classes you want to tell them about your teaching? We have one last class coming up in a couple of weeks and it's all about how to make a terrarium. Yes, you can. Yes, you can make a terrarium. So I will tell you all about the three different types of terrariums and I'm gonna do a live demonstration as well. We'll go over all the different types of plants that you can use, which ones work best and how to use them. And then we'll go over different design techniques and top dressings to create your own unique personal style to match your home. One quick question, is the evening uh, gardening thing with uh, uh, Trevor? Uh, Trevor still yes. existing? Okay, and is it yes. at well, six? Every, that is every Thursday night at six o'clock? Six o'clock. At six o'clock. We're yes. gonna go okay. through the month of June. We are gonna take July and August off though. Oh, okay, so we'll thank see you. There. Thank you, yep, bye, see you tonight Here's maybe. Yep, bye-bye. I asked in the email, but uh, nobody brought it up. This is my uh, begonia. It's yeah. uh, three years old. And uh, I don't know if I can save it anymore, but it's got a really long, long stem yeah. here. Yeah, begonias simply just do that. They just do that. What happens when a plant is unhappy, it will sacrifice its older leaves. So your older leaves are gonna be closer to the soil level. That goes for trees and shrubs, that goes for house plants, that goes for perennials. Um, and then it's gonna focus all of its new growth on the growing tips. So what's happened over time, and by the way, I find just begonias just, Rex begonias just do that as they age. Yeah. Um, sometimes they will lose those lower leaves and then they end up with that weird piece so again, if you want to, you can find a taller pot and repot it lower in so you don't necessarily see that. That's kind of hidden down in the pot. Um, and then why don't you hit that with some Neptune's Harvest or some kind of fertilizer? Um, figure out what you're doing wrong. Are you overwatering it or underwatering it? Are you least turning brown or yellow? Um, so begonias, Rex begonias, and begonias in general are very susceptible to uh, being overwatered and getting root rot. So you wanna make sure you're not watering right around that fleshy stem, water around the rim of the pot. And what did your leaves tell you? Did they turn yellow? They were getting a little too much love with the water. Were they turning brown? Um, maybe the plant was root bound at one point, or maybe you just let it go a little too long in between waterings. Let the leaves talk to you. They'll tell you everything you need to know. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then you just tell me if you have more questions. Okay, Beta. Beta. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Can you just snap off that that um, stem and and lay it on the ground and be very tender with it and cause it to grow again? So with the begonia. Yeah. Begonias, I find, I don't think they root very easily at all. And okay. they need a very balanced level of moisture. So okay. if you simply snap that off, you have effectively cut off its mouth. And within a few days, it's going to rot. 
And okay. it, it's just, it's very hard to propagate begonia. So I don't recommend doing with that particular plant. I wouldn't propagate it that way. Succulents, I should be already sure. You want to cut the top off and leave it out for a couple of weeks. It'll grow roots and you can root it right back in. Not begonias, they can be difficult to propagate. I, I find they have a, a, a little bit of a higher failure rate, but you can reach out to the Begonia Society and they will tell you everything you've ever watched know about begonias. They are begonia. They are like experts, experts in their field. They are amazing. They know all the varieties by heart. They can just look at a begonia and tell you its name. It's incredible. And there's so many different types. So maybe, you know, it, it could be kind of cool. Um, and if you're into begonias, check out um, a begonia show. Um, they have them at Tower Hill too, just as a side note. I went once and it was absolutely riveting. It was awesome. Um, so you can maybe even reach out to them and send pictures to them. They might have even more tips than I do. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Take care.